اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم والحمد للہ والصلاة والسلام علام اللہ نبی آبادہ سیدنا و نبینا و حبیبنا و مولانا محمد صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم و علا آلہ و صحابہ و مانی تدابی حدہ الی آمی دین اشہد ان لا الہ الا اللہ و عدہ لا شریک لہ و اشہد ان محمد عبده و رسول احب نبی علیہ حشمی محمد احب نبی حشمی محمد محمد Lakari faza maka na rasulu imamo Oye bonda beya Hashimi ya muamo Lakari faza manna ba watafa wazarao Oye bonda beya Hashimi ya muamo Waja abi ayate mati kuna kanate Oye bonda beya Hashimi ya muamo Jalai runa tu muha bijai muhammad Oye bona beya Hashimi ya muhammad Habibu biya sarare kulubu manabaho Oye bona beya Hashimi ya muhammad Alila ya uja bili muha sabi wajel Oye bona beya le Hashimi ya muhammad My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. My name is Sheikh Ahmad Momo. Today is the 12th of Rabi'u Awa, the birthday of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Afdalul khaliki wa akramu rusul. I'm in my house today rejoicing and motivating myself in observance of the birthday of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, whose birthday is more worthy of honor and recognition than the birthday of the best of creation and the most honored of the messengers, Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. There are people among us nowadays who have turned themselves into champions of Bidya, 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 Bidya. Whatever we want to do in Islam nowadays, they tell you it's Bidya, stay away from it. It is innovation, stay away from it. I'm trying to use this opportunity to remind them and remind myself that marking the birthday of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is not and cannot be called Bidya. Those of you who have now become champions of Bidya in the world we live, leave Islam alone from controversy. That will not help Islam. It is true that the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Ali was according to the Hadith narrated by Aisha Radi Allah and has said that what was not there in the time of the Prophet, what the Prophet did not tell us in this thing to do. Whoever brings it into the deen, that act is rejected. For who are that do? It's rejected. But at the same time, the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam led us to believe that there are special days in our calendar that need to be remembered and observed from time to time. The prophet was so meek and gentle. He was not the type of person who would come around and say, Hey, come over today. It's my birthday. Come and celebrate with me. Yes, he didn't do so. But he made us realize the significance of his birthday. How? I will tell you. 
Those who are championing Bidia, 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 Bidia. When it comes to Malud Nabi, so Allah to Allah, 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 the only argument they have for you is the Prophet didn't do it. The Sahabas didn't do it. Ulafa Rashidun did not do it. The Salaf did not do it. Therefore, we should not do it. Really? My question is how many of such things that the Prophet did, that the Sahabas did, that Ulafa Rashidun did, that the Salaf did, how many of them do you do? How many of them do you do and do correctly? Let's not kid ourselves. That argument is too broad to be taken for what it is. Yes, it is true that these our foreigners did not observe their birthdays the way we are observing them today as a means of self-aggrandizement. In Islam, we are taught to humble ourselves in all that we want to do. And most of our activities in Islam are actually best done when they are done in the form of worship. It's an act of worship for me to stay in my house and celebrate the birthday of the Holy Prophet Muhammad and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and to join me with him on the day of accountability. Is that a sin? It's not. It's not. We are led to believe by the Prophet that certain days are more important than others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delineated Friday as an important day. That's why he said we should worship on that day in congregation. He delineated the month of Ramadan as a special month. That's why he asked us to fast in the month of Ramadan. He delineated a certain season for the Hajj. That's why he asked us to go to Hajj in the month of Dhulqada, the month of Dhulhijjah, to reenact the history of Islam. These are all delineations. In the same way, the Prophet was asked, which of the days of the week will you recommend for us to fast? First of the days he mentioned was Monday. And they asked him why. One of the reasons he gave was, that is my birthday. That was the day I was born. If the day of his birth was not important to the prophet, I'm not sure he would say we should fast on that day. By asking us to fast on that day is asking us to recognize that day, but to recognize it in the humble way as an act of Ibadah, by serving Allah with it. So we can mark the birthday of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, but what you do in it is what matters. When the Prophet got to Medina, in the year 622 AD, he made the Jews of Medina observing Yawm Ashura as a day of celebration and fast. And he asked them, why are you doing this? They told him, we are doing this to mark the exit of Ben Israel from Egypt, led by Prophet Musa alayhi salam, to their promised land. He told them, we know Prophet Musa more than you. This day is more worthy of celebration to us than you. So he ordered those who were around him to fast on the day of Ashura. That's why it has become a sunnah till today. If it is not proper in Islam to observe certain days as days of celebration, I don't think the Prophet will do that. You say you want to see evidence that the Prophet himself killed the ram or organized a party and called people to celebrate his birthday before you know birthday is important, before you know that we will recognize the day the Prophet was born, we better to disagree with you. The Prophet was born in the year 570 AD on the 12th day of the month of Rabi Awe, corresponding to the month of April 27 or 29 in 570 AD. He became a prophet at the age of 40 in the year 610. When things were not going well in Mecca, he migrated from Mecca to Medina in the year 622 AD. He lived in Medina until the year 632 AD when he passed away. These are the symbolic days in Islam that you and I must not forget. To forget them or to wish them away is to kill the history of Islam, is to deny the reality of Islam, as it is today. My dear brothers and sisters Islam, don't allow yourself to be misled. Don't allow yourself to be misled by those who are now brandishing themselves about with the Quran, in flying robes, claiming to memorize the Quran, claiming to be imams and shuyuk, when in fact, 
the basic aqidah of Islam is not complete for them. Their salawat are not regular. They are due to pay zakah for this year. They have not paid. Last year, they have not paid. They have not performed the hajj, even though they are qualified to perform. Their kalma shahada is shaking. Why? Because they consume what is halal and consume what is haram. When it comes to the month of Ramadan, they join us to say they are fasting. Only Allah knows who is worshipping him in the true sense. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I'm not here to condemn anybody. I'm here to remind you and remind myself that we should not engage ourselves in unnecessary controversies by simply dismissing some members of the Ummah simply because they believe in certain practices in Islam, practices that have solid foundation that you don't believe in. Malud Nabi has been a thing of celebration in many countries of the world before we were born. Were those countries wrong? As I speak to you now, so there are some countries who observe the day as a holiday. Are they wrong? Are you telling me they are going to Jahannam? And you are the only one who will go to Jannah? No, we need to get there first before we know who will go to Jahannam and who will go to Jannah. The key to Jannah is not in your hand. It's not in my hand either. None of us will get in there by our word alone, but by the mercy of Allah's one whole time. The beauty about Islam is La Ikraha There's no compulsion in religion. There's no compulsion in religion. And nobody has absolute knowledge of what is in this book. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the little knowledge you are blessed with. Don't capitalize on that to dismiss what another person knows or is doing because you don't have the right of judgment. The right of judgment is with our last one over time. When we continue to judge ourselves over these minor variations in Islam, then we lose the big picture of how we can fight the enemies of Islam, how we can do dawah to bring more souls into Islam. The Prophet was a da'i by himself. And you are sitting down there, you have not been able to win one single soul into Islam since you were born. The only thing you qualify is be there, be there, be there, be there, be there. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, again, don't allow yourself to be misled. It is very simple. The day the prophet was born is worthy of emulation. Those who are telling you not to observe the day, they themselves are celebrating their own birthday, which is not important compared to that of the prophet. They attend other people's birthday. The same champions of Bidia, 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 who want us to believe that Sadaqat Umayyid, that is giving out charity on behalf of the dead, is Bidia and is Haram. When there are authentic hadith in Sahih al Bukhari and Muslim, in which the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi was confirmed that the charity given on behalf of the dead actually benefit the dead. The hadith narrated by Aisha Radi Allah and her, and the hadith narrated by Sa'id bin Ubar Radi Allah and are reported in Sahih al Bukhari and Muslim, al Bukhari 1388 and 2756, and the Book of Muslim 1004. Whether that sadaqah is given out in cash or in kind, whether it's given out by use of cooked food or raw food, or whether it's given out by way of donation, or whether it's given out, you know, in the first day, second day, and third day, and fortieth day, what does it matter? Why should that be a controversy? My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, save Islam from unnecessary controversies. Let's not bring controversy to destroy Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anfar, Wala tana zamu Watav shalu Watazahabari huku Wazbiru Ena lama Swabiru Do not argue among yourselves 
By so doing, you diminish the air of superiority you have, the air of strength and unity that you have. Be patient. Tolerate one another. Accommodate one another. For our lives in support of those who are patient. The same as last one of what I told us. When it comes to these areas where we differ, last all of you are coming back to our last one hotel. And when you come, we judge between you over who is right and wrong on matters in which you differ. Why are you now assuming that responsibility on behalf of Allah? Are you Allah? Why are you telling me that celebrating Malud Nabi is haram? When even your five daily salawat are not complete. When even your zakah you have not paid. You have not performed the hajj. You have not upheld your kalma shahada in the most sincere manner. Come on, man. Let's give honor to whom honor is due. Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam deserves our honor. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya hayu ala zina amanu Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allah and his angels around him They send salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam You who believe also send salutations upon him If you do so, Allah will send ten times of such salutations upon you And they ask the Prophet, how do we do that for you? He says Allahu masalli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salata ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid Allahumma ya rabbi Salla ala Muhammad Allahumma ya Rabbi, salli ala Muhammad. Wa sayyidu sada. Nabi ya Muhammad. Wa sayyidu sada. Nabi ya Muhammad. Wa hebu nabi ya. Hashimi ya muhammu, Uhebu nabiyya. Hashimi ya muhammu, Uhebu nabiyya. Hashimi ya muhammu. Whether you are sitting in the masjid, or you are at home, or you are on the street, whether you say it aloud or say it silently, Allah ma salli ala muhammadi wa ala ali muhammadi kama salli ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim inaka hamidu majid. What does it matter? Why are we involved in controversy that are not necessary? My dear brother, my dear sisters, I'm not here to condemn anybody. I'm just saying that I have the right to worship Allah to the best of my knowledge and understanding. You have the responsibility to accept that right. Just as I have the responsibility to accept the right you have if you want to stay away from celebrating the prophet's birthday, it's up to you. I recognize that. I don't have any problem with that. But leave me alone to do what I want to do. You can't be my judge. Allah is my judge. <laughs> Kamambarakta la Ibrahim, wala ala Ibrahim, inaka hamidu nabi.